Hello all, welcome to our channel Tech LT World. Today we will be discussing about a very important topic in LT that is the radio bearer in LT. So let us begin. So before starting about uh, discussing about the radio bearer, let us try to understand what is LT bearer. Okay, so. <clears throat> So uh, basically, uh, LT wearer wearer is actually a virtual concept. Okay. It basically defines how the UE and the data signaling are treated when it travels across the network. Okay. So basically, uh, and this bearer actually carries uh, messages or uh, 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 signaling message and the data messages normally of RRC and NAS. Okay. So uh, so uh, if you can see in this pictorial diagram. So in this pictorial diagram, we have we have shown various uh, beside radio bearer, we have also shown other bearers which are present in it. Okay. So uh, the question is when this uh, bearer established in the net in Delta. Okay. So the initial EPS bearer. Okay. So the initial EPS bearer which uh, is actually established when the UE registers with the network. Okay. Using the attach procedure. So during the attach procedure initial attach procedure the initial eps bearer is established and this eps bearer name is nothing but default eps bearer okay and it is used to provide always some connectivity means whenever ue wants to connect with the network and and transfer any signaling message or data radio message this default eps bearer will be used which is established during the initial attach procedure right mm. and uh, the, along with this uh, default eps bearer there, uh, there is another uh, kind of uh, EPS bearer, uh, which is actually formed, uh, which is actually formed to provide different LTQS. If suppose uh, the net, uh, UE or uh, UE needs a different LTQS, okay, uh, um, for the same PDN gateway, uh, then a, a different EPS bearer will be used, known as called as dedicated EPS bearer. Okay, this is important. So it means that the EPS bearer can be of two part type, right? One one will be the one will be the de de default EPS bearer, which is established during the attach procedure, and other is the dedicated EPS bearer, which is formed if UE requires a different LTQS for the same PDN gateway. Okay, or if UE wants to connect to a different PDN gateway, then an EPS bearer will be established, which will be known as dedicated EPS bearer. Okay, uh, all the user plane data are uh, transferred using the same EPS bearer has the same QS. Okay, uh, so this is also very important. Okay, so. Uh, all the user plane data which is actually using the same EPS bearer okay and suppose let's say um a, a, there are multiple UEs okay and they are connected to a single EPS bearer so and they, on all the data of the user uh, and all the data of the particular UE are transferred to the EPS bearer uh, with the same EPS bearer so they will have the same QS because that particular bearer has the same QS requirement okay so uh, so th this is also important fourth point is an EPS bearer is generated by the combination of U train radio access bearer, okay, uh, ERA, uh, and S5 and S8 barrier. It, what, what does we mean by this sentence? So, if you can see in this diagram, okay, uh, this is the EPS bearer, right? This is this is the EPS bearer you can see, right? And um, in, in the below, if you see, this is the ERA barrier, which is between UE and E node B, and between uh, S and and uh, between the serving gateway and the P, P gateway, we have the S5 S8, uh, S5 S8 bearer, right? So uh, if you can see, this ERAP and S5 combinedly make the EPS bearer, right? So this is what we mean by the sentence, right? The um, that the EPS bearer is actually the combination of ERAP and S5 S8 bearer, bearer, right? So this is important. The second thing is. The S1 bearer provides connectivity between the E node B and the home serving gateway. So this S1 bearer, if you see, okay, so this provides the um, this provides a connectivity between the E node B and the serving gateway, right? So whatever message which, which will be travel between the E node B and the serving gateway will will be basically using the S1 bearer, right? And uh, between the serving gateway and P gate, PDN gateway, as we know, we have S5 or S8 interface, right? So the bearer which is used here is also be named after that only S5 and S8 bearer, bearer right? So this is also important. Uh, and the air connectivity uh, that is the between the UE and E node B uh, uh, 
if you can see uh, there is a bearer called radio bearer it means that uh, whatever uh, signaling message or data message data message will be traveling between u and e not b will be taken up by the radio bearer right so overall uh, this if you can see this is uh, in this diagram we have discussed about various other bearer beside radio bearer also we have discussed okay in brief manner so this we all need to keep in mind so other than radio bearer also there are other eps other bearers as, as well right which we should remember okay oh uh, one more bearer which i have not discussed uh, told uh, is that the external bearer which is between pd and gateway and the peer so whatever signaling message or data radio message will be traveling between pd and gateway and the peer or the internet external external world it will be taken up by the external bearer right so if we go in the next slide uh, as i told in the previous slide also so there are basically two types of radio bearer what is the default bearer another is the dedicated bearer right so what is this default barrier? So, and when it is formed, as I told, this LT default barrier is formed during initial attach. Okay. And it is always on IP connectivity. Okay. Its connectivity type is always IP. Okay. And the quality of service that this QoS is used as default only. So it's the default, it uses the default QoS service, right? And the kind of signaling which is used is the IMS kind of signaling, right? So, and if we go in the LT dedicated barrier, so it is the it is a kind of additional bearer means uh, along with the default bearer it is a kind of additional bearer okay which can also for the same APN only okay and um, uh, it basically creates uh, traffic flow of templates on new QoS if suppose we is in the need of new QoS right so they can actually use this LT dedicated bearer and uh, in in this default bearer is used for the IMS kind of signaling but with the help of dedicated radio bearer we can use it for uh, voice and video as well right hope the uh, difference between this default dedicated uh, ded barrier and dedicated barrier is clear. So this is nothing but a two types of radio barrier in the LT only, right? And if we go in terms of QoS uh, for default and dedicated barrier, we can also uh, in terms of QoS also we can classify them. Okay. So in terms of QoS, if you see, so for the default barrier, uh, there is a uh, thing called non-GPR, right? So the, the, the for the non-GPR, uh, the QCI is the nine. Okay. Uh, so I mean uh, default bearer can be classified into two one is in terms of uh, in terms of QoS so uh, one is the non GBR uh, in, in terms of default bearer there is a single non GBR which, which is classified as QCI equal to nine and in case of dedicated bearer there are two types of uh, the uh, this also there is one GBR which is the guaranteed bitrate and also uh, we have non GBR which is the non guaranteed bitrate and they are also uh, cl classified into two one is the QCI one to four and in non GBR it's QCI five to eight okay so in terms of qs we have classified the default and dedicated variable in this way right finally we comes to the we come to the srb that is, uh, that is the signaling radio bearer okay so uh, srb uh, as a, by the name only it implies that it is used for transferring the uh, uh, rrc and the nas signaling message okay whatever signaling message will go from srb only okay now as we know in lt there are two types of signaling uh two types of signaling messages right one is the rrc and other is the nas so rrc as we know is between ue and the e node b right and the nas is between ue and the mme so this signaling two signaling message will be will be going from this srb only right and uh, the type of srb is srb0 srb1 and srb2 okay so um, means in LT there are three three types of SRBs. One is SRB zero, one second one is SRB one, and third is the SRB two. So uh, when did this SRB zero is formed? So this SRB zero is formed when uh, you is actually used when RRC connection is established. So initially when RRC connection is established using CC, uh, CC, um, common control uh, channel, uh, logical channel, uh, and all, all the initial RRC message will be going through this SRB zero only. Okay, and SRB one. Is used, is used to transfer the RRC message, usually the piggyback message. As we know, as we know, in, in the E node B, we don't have the uh, NAS layer, right? So uh, if we want to transfer this NAS layer from EUE to the network, we need uh, we need to piggyback the uh, we be, we need to piggyback the NAS message into this RRC message, right? RRC message. So uh, so and this uh, piggyback message will be taken up by SRB one only. Okay, in the in which channel? In the uh, in the dcs channel okay in the dcs channel um, in the dcs channel will be basically 
will be basically taking off all this uh, piggyback RRC NAS message, uh, piggyback NAS message. Okay. And the uh, third one is the SRB2. Okay. So this SRB2 is actually used uh, is actually um, used uh, only after the security activation. Okay. As we know, um, as we know, the, uh, there are two types of security activation in LTE, right? One is the RRC level of security, another is NAS level of security. So whenever, when this uh, security activation is completed only, then only SRV2 will be used, okay? And SRV2 usually have uh, lower priority than SRV1, okay? So always first SRV0 will come, and then SRV1, and then third is the SRV2, okay? And after uh, the security activation is completed, it uh, this SRV2 initiation will be done by the U-Trend, right? Before that, it will not be, uh, SRV2 will not be used, okay? Uh, so this is very important. So if from this, you know that SRB zero, if you see, right, the SRB zero is, is using CCH, right, is using CCH, uh, CC, uh, CCH logic cha logical channel. Okay. This is common control channel and this SRB one. is used uh, for in the dedicated control channel okay uh, this srb2 is also used in this same channel only okay same channel only but it has a lower priority than srb1 right uh, and yeah he, in this uh, in this uh, slide also we have discussed the same thing only that in srb0 uh, uh, the type of message which is transferred is rc message only it, uh, and it is used when rc connection established and the channel which is used here is the CCA channel, which is very important, right? And in SRB one, uh, basically takes up the piggyback NAS message, and the channel which is transmitted is the DCCA channel only. Okay, and in SRB two also we uh, we, uh, we uh, means we take up the piggyback NAS message only inside the RRC message, but it has lower priority than SRB one, and it is and it is used only after the security activation, right? Uh, in this slide, you can see that uh, the different signaling messages and and the and the type of SRB which it used. Okay, so this is very important. Uh, if you if you can see uh, the first message is the master information block. Okay, so you can see that it doesn't use any any of the SRB, not applicable. So it doesn't go in any of the SRB. Okay, and then is the system information block type one. That is SRB one. Okay, so uh, um, sorry, uh, the system information block one. Okay, so SIB one. So SIB one also doesn't use any any of the SRBs. Okay, now comes the RRC connection request, which is the initial RRC message. Obviously, so as I told, the initial all the RRC message will be will be going through the SRB0 only. Okay, so here it is. You can see that the, it is it went through the SRB0 and then RRC connection setup is it went through the SRB0 only. RRC connection setup complete also uh, went through SRB1. Okay, so as we know, the in RRC, in RRC, uh, inside RRC connection setup complete, we piggyback the attached request, right? attached request is a NAS message. So it has been used inside SRB1, correct? So hope you are getting this point that uh, the piggyback NAS message has been uh, uh, has been uh, is, is been using the SRB1 and the RRC connection setup complete. Inside that, we basically piggyback the NAS message. That's why we have used SRB1 for it, okay? Similarly, RRC connection reconfiguration for that, we have used SRB1, okay? And for measurement report, again, we have used SRB1, okay? Uh, and for mobility from UTRA command, we use the SRB1 only. For UE capability inquiry, again, we use S SRB1. Okay, because till then, because before UE capability inquiry, uh, RRC connection, uh, RRC security has not been completed. So till then, uh, till then we, we need to use the SRB1 because SRB2 can only be used after the security mode has been completed, right? And then we have this DL information transfer is actually used either by, it can be, you can use SRB2 or SRB1. Okay. So, uh, um, uh, only if SRB2 is not established yet. So D DL information transfer will be using the SRB1 only when SRB2 is not established. Okay, if it is established, then this DL information transfer will be used, it will be uh, used in SRB2 only. Okay, paging again doesn't use any of the uh, SRBs. Okay, uh, one of the important, uh, one, one, one important point which I need to discuss actually. So in uh, sometimes in troubleshooting, you can find that, uh, that the SRB message, which has been sent by the network, 
is sent to the UE, but UE had not responded for it. So there might be a situation like that, right? So the 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 issue uh, the reason is that um, that 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 particular message has not been assigned the proper SRB. Let's say uh, the RRC connection setup was meant for SRB zero, okay, and mistakenly RRC connection setup was was uh, been sent in SRB one. So uh, if it if it goes like that in the UE, then uh, you will not be uh, decode uh, this particular message even though the message was correct. So this is very important that uh, that uh, whatever uh, whatever signaling message we are transferring, it is going it should be going to the correct uh, correct uh, uh, um, SRB. Okay, uh, if if there is a mismatch in the SRB, then you will, UE will not be able to decode that message. Correct. So uh, the second one uh, in the radio bearer is the DRB. Okay, so DRB actually uh, is nothing but it carries the data messages. Okay, all the data related messages will be going through the DRB. Okay, so data messages, as I told, um, you can see uh, DRB is actually of two types. One is the default radio bearer, which is actually the non-GBR means non-GBR means the non-guaranteed uh, guaranteed bit rate. Okay, so and and other is the dedicated bearer. Okay, which is both for non-GBR and GBR. So if you can see in this diagram, okay, so it has been divided into two parts. Okay, so one, one is the resource type GBR, another is the non-GBR. Okay, so um, and uh, and each of the each of them each of them uh, uh, has different QCI, right? And uh, and also have different priorities, right? Let's say for uh, let's say if you see the QCI one, okay, then it is uh, it, it has a resource type of GBR. So it it means that it can either be uh, it can either it, it can either use dedicated bearer or it can use uh, uh, dedicated default DRB. Okay, so um, um, uh, uh, and and the priority is to uh, it has different priorities, right? So for one, if you can see uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, the resource type is GBR and the priority can be two, four, five, uh, two, four, three, five, one. So the highest uh, two, four, three, uh, two, four, three, five, right? So where, where the highest priority is given to the QCI one. Okay. And the, and also each of them has different packet delay budget. Okay. Like let's say QCI one has packet delay budget of 100 millisecond. Okay. And, and uh, similarly, QCI two has an uh, uh, packet delay uh, uh, budget of uh, 150 millisecond and so on. Okay, and also each of them has different packet error loss also. Okay, and each QCI, if you see from QCI one to QCI nine, okay, each of them uh, have different functionality as well. Like, like for example, if you see in in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, IMS signaling, okay, it is IMS signaling is actually used uh, for QCI five, okay, uh, where uh, its resource type is non GBR, okay, non guaranteed bitrate. Okay, and non guaranteed bit rate and the and the and the services which it is uh, and the and the packet delay but uh, packet uh, error loss which it is using is the 10 to power minus 5 and the delay budget is the uh, in that is the 300 millisecond okay and the priority is, is used as uh, 6 okay and so on. and also you can see in the, for the different uh, applications like conversation voice it is using QCI1 okay and the and the resource type it is using as GPR okay so for each, uh, so um, basically the DRB is distributed in terms of this parameters like QCI, resource type, priority, right, uh, um, packet delay budget and packet error, error loss, which combinedly forms this type of these two type uh, these these DRBs. Okay. So hope uh, you like the uh, today's video on SRB and DRB, um, and hope it was insightful. Uh, we'll be coming up with more more videos, more videos. Uh, uh, so keep supporting us. Uh, thank you.